So what we're doing today is looking at, at feet. And we're here uh, with pedals. Uh, I have a secondary pedal, sort of. Uh, and uh, and as I was mentioning to you, Dick, Dick Wilson would have you come in in between your hands lessons. You couldn't interrupt the flow of your scheduled hands lessons. You had to come in specifically, especially for, for feet. Yeah. You'd arrive and you spend the first 40 minutes with Dick having gone underneath his grand piano covered in dust with all his scores, music everywhere, and he'd pull that bass drum out, the, the, the Rogers. It was, I believe it's the bass drum that I have. I think that's the one he would teach on. Yeah. He also had a, he had a, 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 a couple of really beautiful Rogers sets. Those, those were happening back in the day. Louis Belson was playing Rogers. And, uh, and he'd pull that out and he'd spend it the next 40 minutes dusting it off and you'd hang, yeah. you know, because he didn't think it was respectful to, to uh, the instrument. Right. Or to the person playing the instrument, you know, he thought that the bass drum shouldn't be dusty. And now what he would also say is that a drummer with no feet ain't worth a damn. Right? He talk about the fact that as a drummer, we want to sound settled. And having good feet is a big part of that. Um, he'd also talk about the fact that the feet are easy because you're not dealing with fingers holding a stick. So right. he thought that the feet were actually easy. The other reason that, that I <laughs> promote students coming in to, to take to, to think about how the feet work is because it 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 can provide precious insight with regards to how the hands work mm -hmm. because we're, we're making we're making similar motions just like with uh the the uh hands and making throws that is, are led by the wrist so everything is led by the wrist with the, with the feet we 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 don't we don't lift from the hip Try maintaining your balance. Go ahead and lift up. See how you have to lift up both feet. Oh, yeah. See how you have to lean back. Yeah. And that confuses drummers. I've seen uh -huh. countless, you know, right. letters, yeah. editors of modern drumming saying, how do I do it? Why do I, why does it feel uncomfortable? And I can't seem to find any balance. Right. Yeah. So we're going to address that today. It's kind of playing with this setup a little bit. So, get the general idea. Um, so we'll start right at the beginning. <clears throat> and I mentioned those are those are, you know, those look like something you'd pick up in Malibu. Those shoes. Very <laughs> <Great. laughs> And and you can play it play it in in shoes if you want. I think Dick would typically have you know you'd be e either barefooted or stocking footed. He'd have you take your shoes off. But oh, it, it, but it, it, socks, it, John. that's not a it's not a big deal. It, it, it depending on yeah depending on how much we get into this. No you, holes no holes in the socks so we can. Uh, yeah, that's a, I probably should have warned you ahead of time. Yeah, see yeah yeah everything everything you got the whole you got the look going on. All right, <laughs> so so. What what Dick would have you do is he he talk about he talk about the placement of the foot. He had a particular pedal, which I no longer have right now. What was that pedal? It was this very simple pedal with I think it had a leather strap. It was old school. Yeah. And he would talk about particular place on the pedal here we just we don't have anything really definitive that I could point to but what we don't want to be is and and I learned because I used to rely on the toe stop yeah uh, I have removed not on this old pedal I don't even think this one's removable but uh but I removed my toe stops yeah. it would would talk about the fact that we're sending energy down not forward and 
even if we're playing properly, sending the energy down, if if that, that bass drum isn't, you know, securely on on some carpeting, perhaps, right? Yeah. It, on, on a hardwood stage, that, that I learned that as as a, a twelve year old playing one of my first live gigs. No one told me I'm on a hardwood stage and my bass drum and hi hat are just five feet <laughs> out. Uh, yeah. And uh, the next day I went and put a bunch of nails in the stage to secure everything. I didn't know. <laughs> so, but the idea is we're sending energy down. Now, we don't want to run the foot, speaking of the toe, we don't want the, the foot way up high. We don't want it up in here somewhere. And we don't want it too far back. Similarly with, with a drumstick, you know, oh, it too far back and it feels as like there's too much weight forward. Yeah. All right, so we're looking to leverage this pedal as efficiently as possible. So yeah, you see, that's too far back. So somewhere up in there, kind of maybe where the, uh, it's a beautiful pedal, where, where, where the insignia the, or the silver area comes to rest. Somewhere, somewhere up in there. See, they did a good job. It, <laughs> that's a pretty good indicator. Yeah. So somewhere in there, right? Now, here's, here's the other important aspect with regards to all things feet and pedal related. Uh, I came from, it, it's, it's it almost perhaps different towns, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe depending on, I don't know, I'm sure there are a bunch of variables that would influence how drummers tend to move in a particular direction technically. Or, yeah. You know, uh, one really good teacher can motivate a multitude of drummers. Perhaps a not so good teacher would, would perhaps, it, 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 or a teacher that uses a different technique might incorporate something different. I don't know why it is, but in Toronto, it seems like I go and wherever I would go and sit in or the pedals would, and, I, and this is how I used to play. The pedals would be very loose and, and, and sloppy and floppy. Yeah. Floppy and sloppy. And, and so Dick immediately had me tension my springs so, so that it, there was a feeling of being able to put some weight on the pedal right. without it just going clunk because it's ready to just, it's no tension. So it's ready to just fall into the head as soon as you put any force on the pedal. Yeah. Okay. And once again, in a sense, not in a sense, the mechanism here, and they're all kind of similar. Well, there's some pretty cool different things coming out these days in terms of bass drum pedals. But essentially, we're dealing with a fulcrum or a series yeah. of fulcrums, right? There, there's got it. There's a, there's a, what am I putting it? There's a fulcrum here, right? There's some kind of fulcrum here. There's a fulcrum maybe here. Quite fascinating. And yeah. in, in some way, there'll be some perhaps form of fulcrum. I want to be careful with that in the in the foot itself. But but some central point in the in in uh, where the foot meets the pedal. So what we're going to do is Dick would say <coughs> you put your you put your put your foot on the pedal, just spread your toes out, just relax everything. For me, I sit a little lower than you. Yeah. And and perhaps you you want to play with that. I, I used to sit almost, I mean, Vinny was sitting so low. Yeah. And see, there was everybody copying Vinny because he plays yeah. so great. It's like, that's the answer. And it, and I know why he did it. And I like the idea of being close to the earth. Yeah. I play, I like my furniture at, uh, close to the, it's very Asian, I guess. Yeah. It gives you a feeling of being grounded or settled. So you might want to consider lowering, lowering your, your stool just a little. I typically I've had to have a bunch of stools chopped, you know, hack sawed off to get them. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what, what we want to, yeah, you can lower it just a little. So th that way you, 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 you're not so on top of the instrument. You're sitting in the cockpit yeah. as part of the instrument. 
Yeah, I got you thinking about it. Cool. Okay. So, right? <laughs> well, uh, the, these are the of the things. These are the behind the scene things. That go, <laughs> and no one would, no one who's not a musician out in the audience. They don't really probably think about how high the drummer is sitting. Yeah, I think it went down. Yeah, it definitely went down a little bit. And and uh, probably most of the other musicians in the band aren't thinking about it. <laughs> Drum centric. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So, cool. Now I don't know how tight your 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 pedal is, and you can play with that later. Yeah, it's it fairly looks, loose. It, it looks kind of loose, and I, I we aren't going to be able to tell from this less expensive pedal. But uh, yeah, yeah. And a good pedal sh should just rock back and forth on its own until it comes to press. So it's a, it's a really good pedal, and I'm sure it provides you the opportunity to control the tension fairly yeah, easily. Yeah. So you can play with that as we go along, and based on what I show you, it, it might give you insight, and you can sort of guide yourself with regards to the, the tension. So what what we're learning to do is, yes, and by the way, I came from the school of playing flat-footed, and when yeah. I got to Dick, he was rather impressed with my with my flat-footed feet playing. I was in Toronto. I'm going to brag just for a minute because I, I really didn't have an understanding of hands, which is one of the reasons I came to L.A. Because I read about Dick Wilson through a, a, a Carlos Vega article talking about how this guy teaches these aspects of how to play technically that are just so fundamental and the way Carlos played it was like I think it's time to move to LA seriously and yeah. and so I was playing in Toronto and it happened that Prakash John who's a very well-known bass player he's a famous it's kind of like a party band it's yeah. it's like a drum chair in Toronto and and I mean, he played Barbara Streisand's wedding he played Wayne Gretzky's wedding that kind of yeah, yeah. And he, he, he said, Kevin, you know, I, I, I heard you play and I, 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 I was uh, doing sound and I uh, uh, tapped on your drums. I hope you don't mind. I just got the sense that and, and they were seen tuned properly. So I, I stayed for the first tune and I stayed for the whole set because you've got really good feet. It's like, yeah. I do. <laughs> and when I came up to, to L.A., Dick said, yeah it, that's it yeah but i could not play heels up so i didn't have really good feet i understood this part of it can you do that can you you see how we're stopping down see how it stops it just stops there you go now So the muscles in front of the knee here, it's very similar to what's happening with the hands, the construction of the wrist, the elbow, the antifibrical fossa, the shoulder. There's some there's similarities that are worth considering. But so you can feel the muscles only pull. So the muscles in front of the elbow are, are pulling. And then the muscles on the other side in front of the elbow pull thusly. Right, and so the muscles, I believe, in front of the knee are lifting. I can almost feel them, and then yeah. the muscles behind the knee are are pulling, pulling, pulling. Okay, and so we just get that. And again, it's kind of up to come down, isn't it? So to speak, back to go forward. We don't we don't wait here. Just like with our hands, we don't wait back. We don't wait back here. So that means we have to maintain a certain amount of pressure. You notice? Yeah. Do a little bit now, and as we go along, you you can bury the beater into the bass drum. 
and, and, and that is a helpful way to approach this in terms of feeling it. But as you develop more control, as Dick would say, you'll learn that you don't need to leave the beater on on the head. Yeah. How do I get that shot? Why won't it give me that shot? Let's see. That way, so that we 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 don't need to leave the we, we can learn to play so that we don't need to leave the beater on the head, or we can. Okay, so that that's not a bad flat-footed turn, like an ankle turn, isn't it? Notice. Again, we don't have to worry about the toes. They're not really, they're not doing, they're not doing this. Ah. There may be some follow through when we go to start making motions that both Murray and, and Dick explained to me. So, okay. <clears throat> so now it gets, here's where people, including me, were confused. And it used to, it kind of drove me crazy, you know, and it, it was incredibly helpful to my playing to have taken the, just my first foot lesson with Dick Wilson was, you know, a game changer. OK, yep. so we're here flat footed, right? Yeah. Now. Can you ro can you roll up? And and leave that that beater right where it is. It's not bad. So you're not you're not lifting your ankle to do that. Just, just like with the hands, you are. Let's see if I can do this. Just like with the hands, you, you don't lift your arm up. You leave the B down and you pronate to go up. You leave the B down and you pronate to go. You pronate to go up, and and then you come down. Right. Well, we're leaving the beater or the bead down and we're pronating. So does I believe that's a pronation. Now, here's the important thing. Dick would talk about the ball of the foot. Never, never leaves. The. Uh, the. Uh, the footboard. Yeah. Or the pedal board. So you want to keep the ball of the foot. See how see how the ball of the foot is directly in contact with the the uh, footboard? You yes. like that? You see? So there's got you develop some flexibility in here. The toes. What what do you feel the toes doing? They're basically planted there for the most part, kind of. They, I mean, they, they turn, they're curving, but they're kind of just staying there most, mostly. Okay. Flexing, flexing a bit. Oh, you, the, yeah, you see, remember, again, I'm going to make hand to foot associations. They're different, but there are similarities. So just like with the hand, if, mm. we, if we bend forward, right? The, tight. The, tight. It's, there is a reaction in the fingers. Yeah. So I notice it's very subtle, but if I bend forward, the toes seem to want to, they spread open just a little. And, oh, yes, there's some reaction in the toes, and when I come back, they seem to come together ever so slightly. Right. So they're not separate. They're part of the foot. The hip bone is connected to the thumb bone, right? <laughs> so yeah. All right, so we feel that now. So now we're just going to go up and down, which you've been successful. Try to keep the beater stable, and it's hard for all of us, right? Okay. So now go ahead and put the beater on the on on the surface. Can you put the beater on the surface? No, keep it there. Okay. Now 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 there's a certain level of discipline or concentration, uh, or consistency of pressure. Yeah. So that now, if we're going to leave the beater on the surface, 
we can go up and down. It really feels easy. Literally feels like we're moving our foot on the floor. You did right. that with your other foot and you just went just like that on the floor. It, that's what you're doing, right? See? So your feet are already better. Just that's how you, that's essentially how we play. Yeah. Okay. So now what Dick would have you do is let's let's for fun let's keep the beater off the surface. It's yeah. it's it, it, uh, it's a little more difficult. It takes a little more di uh, discipline, more control. So he'd have you just lean forward and make a note. Can you do that? Now look, oh, I'm, 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 I'm down here about a half an inch away from the uh, bottom of the uh, pedal. Yeah. This this pedal isn't a long board. It hinges um, like an inch or something above, kind of like you are. Yeah. And, and and then I just go up and make an, yeah, and I stay right there. I stay there. You've gone up, haven't you? Yeah. Now Dick would have you go up again. Go higher. Just a little. Oh, it got, got a little weird. Let's start again. And remember, depending on how many times we're going to go up, we have to be careful not to move. We have to move in small increments. OK, so we we, we have an up. Got to no. give, give you. Are you, are you uh, keeping that beater off? Yes, I am. And I'm making a little oh, note just by, just by going forward. Isn't that we, what, we, what I've been teaching you with the hands? You know, when I have you do a Murray Spivak single stroke, I tell you not to turn to the ceiling first, just to go forward. Right. There it is. You see, they're the same in that sense. Okay, you got a note. Give me another note. Yep, just a little. Uh, you have to just make a little tap. Now give me another note. And another note. <laughs> yeah, I'm all the way up now. Now right. let's, let's come down in increments. I haven't practiced this in years. And down again. Down again. Down again. It's off from the ankle. I'm not doing anything with my my thigh, the hip, fulcrum is just nice and relaxed, and just following the ankle. So we're making notes up, and then notes down. You see? So you're going to want to work on that. Yeah. So how many can we get comfortably? One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe Dick would have you do six. Two, three, four, five, six. Here, okay. Now we could do one. And we could do one. One, 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 one. Now, unlike the uh, the throw. Let's see if I can get this into position. But un unlike a throw, where uh, un unlike a throw, where you 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 get what is where where you get uh, this little bend. Yeah. Now this is kind of a cool angle. I hope that everybody can see this, but you can you can see you can see my elbow. Yeah. Okay. See the elbow moving? Right. Just so slightly. Okay. I hurt myself of playing on my hand. <laughs> hey, you don't want that. Right, you, you've just been through that with your thumb, N not playing related. But you see the elbow swiveling out? Yes. It's ever so slightly. Well, the knee doesn't swivel out. What the knee does is the knee, although it's a, perhaps the closest thing to the elbow, if we're doing a hands to foot comparison, the knee just goes up. So it doesn't go out. So the knee is reacting like it differently, but just like the elbow reacts because it's a chain reaction. You see this whole thing. As pointed out in the Richard Martinez, Kevin Crabb articles, Spivak Wilson articles in Modern Drummer, the whole thing is a lever system. 
Right. See? And, and so what we've got happening is we've got anything happening here is going to affect the knee and will affect and will affect <laughs> will affect the hip. See, the whole thing moves in concert. See how that works? And, and, and so it is with the leading of the wrist and the forearm following and then the elbow rotating out a little bit to accommodate keeping the stick straight. Yeah. Here, where it's not, it's more, it's easier accommodating keeping the, uh, the beater, the, the, the pedal itself is a locked in lever system. So you consider that an upstroke basically, that's the floor you, and that's an upstroke. Go. You got it, man. Right? You, you, okay, yeah, you're getting it. See how they're see how similar they are? Yeah. So now now your playing is going to be make more sense. Yeah. Okay. Because your it it go you, your playing will be more holistic. So okay. Wrist, so, wrist turn. Yeah, <laughs> right. Or or we can just we can turn with that with, with the foot still in the air. With the Foot in the air. In other words, heel up, right, right. And and then what we can we can get happening. And I, I don't need to show you both pedals, but we can we can get. Samba, right. Right. Uh, yeah, but I'm doing this. I'm going like this. Up, down, up, down. Down, 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 like two down. See, that's what we were working on, weren't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, there it is. There so you go. Uh -huh. Two down, over and over. I see. Uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh. How would you do two down? No, no, when you go up, you have to leave the beater down. Uh huh, and then you're going to make one note down, so the heel's going to come down a tiny bit. No, heel has to come down. You're going down, heel has to come down. And then you're going to make another note. Heel's got to come down again. Just what I showed you when you, which is why you need to just spend some time. This is yeah. brand new to you. Right, just right. six up, six down. See, this is what we're looking for. Uh, uh. So how are you ever really going to play a cool funk tune? Boom, 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 there it is, off, boom, chick, chick, boom, boom, or on, boom, 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 chick, chick, boom, 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 ding, boom, boom, right? But is your heel always floating up, or do you ever plant your heel? Uh, every once in a while, like for if I'm playing a ballad, maybe. Yeah. You know, but most of the time. Majority, you kind of floating. Half I'm minute floating, floating like because it feels more like the hands. Right, right, right. It's once I put my foot down on the floor, it would be more akin to maybe putting your playing in a chair that has arms on it and resting my arms on the chair's arms yeah right and you can play that way so just give me two down if you can do that come on gotta go down the heel has to go down watch heel is gonna go down just give me one down oh, I see. Just, one da just one down Math, maybe it, just give me a down, yeah. Up, and then it's got to wait where you started. It's got to come right. back where you started. If you want to leave it on the beater, uh, if you want to leave the beater on the head, do. It makes it a little easier. Yours, because you're not on a drum, it's a little far forward, so it's not quite straight. Yeah. So it's a little off. But but if you did leave it on and you rolled up, just roll up. 
Now leave it on there. Now, no, leave it on and roll up. There it is. Now roll down and give me a note. There. And stay down. You did it. Roll up. You did it. Now roll down and give me a note. There it is. You got it. No, come on. It's all going to happen right away. It happens pretty fast, right? Uh, uh, it happens fast. No, it doesn't go up. It means you're lifting your leg to get it to do that. Yeah. Because you've got all this weight, you're balanced on the pedal. You are, in a sense, just trapped by the physics of the planet and the nature of the human body, the way, the way it's put together so that it's, everything is going to feel like it's falling. So once we lift up all this weight, we release it and it falls. See, we don't go, if, if you, the only way to not let the weight of the leg fall would be if you were holding up, holding it up with your hip. Right. But I'm not. All my weight, the weight of, I'm lifting the weight of my leg, which is what I'm trying to get you to feel with your hands. I'm lifting yeah. the weight, leveraging it up. The perfect lever system, the human yeah. body, this perfect simple machine, and I lever leverage it up, so all that weight, it's gonna fall. Yeah, like that. You see, that's all the time you have to get that beater to come forward and then or back and then forward. Real has to happen quick because you have to time it because that has to happen before your ankle, before the heel touches your footboard. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna. Look, watch if you just let it fall. Let the weight fall. It's going to fall like that fast. This much weight coming up at that speed will just fall without making a note at all. Really, it's hard not to make a note. Actually, see, so it just falls. Boom, let it go. And then if you were going to snap it back, you'd have to get it back and then forward quickly enough so that it happened within the context of that leg fall. Okay. Now, even though, even though. Uh, do, do those are those shoot those uh, those California surfer shoes? Yeah. God. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, do, do do would they make any noise if you were to play the, on that hardwood floor, or are they really soft on the bottom? Yeah, I think they might have a, have a click on it for the left foot. You saying? Yeah. Let Let's see what happens. Just can you can you can you give me a little make a little sound? Okay. Can you make a sound? as though you were playing on a pedal heel up go on up and make a little note on the down way down there you go see see how that works that's pretty good dude yeah there you go okay so we can do this so you don't need to see both of my feet even though i could do the same thing i guess right uh uh could do it this way for a minute but it's not really important Oh, you're lifting. See, you're lifting. Your left on the floor is a little better. Interesting, right? Because you're dealing with this new this contraption and it's creating just a little bit of confusion. Uh, you don't get to lift up like that. You roll up and put all the weight forward. That's why you want the pedal to be tight. You want the springs to be tight so you can put some weight on it and it won't collapse. It'll it'll yeah. stay in that Richard Martinez fixed point in the universe, right? First, Dick would say you're going to leave the beater down when you go up. It's all the same stuff. Yeah, see okay. if I can tighten this up. I guess. You're tightening it up. Okay. I'm so, not sure how to do it, though. So I'll have to figure that out. I'll have to figure that out. Right. You might have to loosen up the uh, security bolt. Yeah. That locks it in. It'll just take a minute. Okay. So what I have here is the legendary Richard Wilson exercise called wait for it it's called the apex of the apotheosis huh. and even though this is what dick wilson wrote on the lesson i i believe greg albin one of richard's longest studying students he he, he wrote wrote this out based on this seems identical to. What does apotheosis mean? See, that's a very good question. See, this is where Greg Alvin comes in because he's written it out. Apotheosis. This is rather fitting based on who wrote this.
theos, from theos, a god, the act of making a god of a person, making, making a god of a person, attributing of divinity to human being, deification, the glorification of a person or thing, a glorified ideal. <laughs> okay, that's the apotheosis. The apex of said apotheosis is apex, the highest point of anything, tip, peak, vertex, the tip and con contiguous, contiguous portion of the blade of the tongue, a climax. Yeah. Sub summit. Okay. So I'm going to let's see if you can pull this off. I'll give you a little foot exercise. We're going to have you doing the up six times and down six times. Then I'm going to have you play one down, and then I'm going to have you play two down. Okay, and that'll start to develop certain funk patterns and as well provide you the opportunity to play bossa novas and, you know, and sambas. All right. Let's see if I can do this, you know. I hope I'm not overly ambitious. I haven't played this in years. <laughs> so, yeah, so what, what he's got going here <clears throat> is we're counting. The right foot is going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and a two and a three and a four and one and a two and a three. You're playing quarter above triplets against that, right? One and a two and a three and a four and a right. Let's see. Uh, Anybody put this is into the shot? Let's see. Let's see if I can do that. My other, uh, for whatever reason, this pedal is not fitting on on my other bass drum trigger pad actually i've got a I've got the old elisa's trigger pad let's see would this work <laughs> a little a little a little pop so one so one one two three four one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four one and a two and a three okay so the right foot is playing two three four one making that lovely motion three four and we should probably start off slower three four there's no metronome markings on here, so let's see. One, two, three, four. One, a two, and a three, and a four, and one, and a two, and a three, and then four. I'm just whether you can play one, and a two. Now, the, and off the foot that's playing the uh, quarter note triplets, uh, and uh, three, and uh, is going to be the new quarter note. One, a uh, two, a uh, three, four, one, two, three. So it's one, two in the right foot, three, four, and the left goes one, and a uh, two, and a uh, three, and this left foot becomes the new quarter note. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, ne four. Now one and a two. Now the right foot's gonna play <laughs> quarter note triplets. See? Now the right foot's playing the quarter note triplets. Now the right foot's gonna become a new quarter note. A four and a one, two, three, four, one, two. Now left's gonna play. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Now the left. Three and a four and a one and a two and a ah shit. What well, was I done? One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a. Now the left foot is playing the quarter note triplets. To speak, it's going to become the new quarter note. Three and a four and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Uh, 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 I don't think I can do it. Uh, uh, uh. some point you're, it's going to be too fast you see I, I i'm i'm 
close to being maxed out, right? So, so, uh, 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 the left was playing the quarter note, uh, triplet. Now the left went, we're going to go back. Two, three, four, one, two, um, three, now four, and a one, and a two, and a, now the right foot is playing the quarter note triplet. And a four, and a one, and a one, and a two, and a three, and now the right foot is going to become a new quarter note. One and now the left foot becomes a quarter note. We're retrograding backwards. One and a two. Now the left foot's going to become a new quarter note. Two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, one. Now the right foot is playing the quarter note for this. It's going to become a new quarter note. And the left foot's going to become the quarter note triplets. One and uh, two, and we're almost right back to where we started, aren't we? So I think we started on the right foot. So this is going to become the new quarter note. One and uh, two and uh, see? No, no, no. It's fine. What, what, what did we do? One and uh, now this is one, two, one and uh, 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 uh. now the right foot's the new quarter note. Three, four, and the left's going to be uh, 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 uh. Now the left is the quarter note trip. And then we're back to the top because we just started doing this, right? And the left foot plays. There are no triplets. Then the left foot becomes uh, 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 and then the right becomes uh, 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 and then the left foot uh, 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 and see the thing just keeps going until you get to a place where you can't go any faster. Yeah, I can't go any. I can't even start it yet. But uh, right. So let, let's but just the quarter note triplet. Uh, that's what's if, so a quarter note triplet is that three quarter notes within the space of one. One quarter note, or is that spread over? I'm not sure I follow that. The quarter note triplet. First, well, first of all, I'm going to send it to you, but let's just feel it first, okay? One, and how are we going to count it? Three, four, one, two. So for every two quarter notes, you're going to get three notes within that space. So they're gonna start at the same time, right? One, ah, uh, ah, uh, one and ah, uh, two and uh, one and ah, uh, two and uh, one and ah, uh, two and ah, uh, uh, two and uh, one and ah. Uh, no, it's gonna be so. It's gonna be one and ah. Uh. That's to play one, one and ah. Uh. Uh. Yeah, and then the right. So let's see what happens. Uh, one and a two. One and a two. There, you got it. One and two. One and a two. And then the foot comes after the. So the foot comes together right uh, before and then right after. One and a two and. Uh, no, nope, uh, the end, the last end is just by itself. Right. It starts uh, over. One and a two and. Uh, now they're together again. Uh, you got it. One and uh, two and uh, one and. Uh, uh, you got it, dude. Uh, that's tough. <laughs> you one, and, one and uh, uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, ah. Right. Oh, that's tricky. Cool, huh? Can you yeah. can you go the other way? Let's just try uh, once the other way. Once you have this, it's it's one, it becomes a no-brainer. One, speeding it up. And uh, two and uh, one and uh, two. Uh, so it's one, one and one, uh, two and one and uh, two and one and uh, two, and one, one, and, uh, and, two and one and uh, two. Right. So the right's going to be and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, that. Together, right? Yeah. Um, but the good, the good, the good, the 
and uh, idea, right? Yeah. So, so just just to make sure you understand how it modulates, I want you to turn it around once for me to show me you can turn it around. Switching feet. Okay. Right. So you're you're going to get the first pattern, nice and slow. No metronome. We don't. And maybe that's why there's no metronome. One and uh, two. Ah, hold on. One and uh, two and uh, not. Do you want to switch right there or go through it no, one time? It's going to get that feeling first in your body. Right. Uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, one and uh, two and. Okay, now just the left foot at that speed. What is it? Just now. Now you're going to leave the right foot out and keep counting what you're doing in the left. So you're doing one and a uh, two and uh, one and a uh, two and now you're just going to play the left foot counting a uh, two and uh, got it. Uh, one and uh, two and yeah, uh, one right. and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, now start one. counting one two three four. Change the counting and turn that foot that's counting what triplets into one. Same speed. Don't change the speed. So start also. counting one and a two and a. Uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, one. Count one, two, three. Come on, four. Just count one, two. Now it's quarter notes. Three, four. Hey, play, one, play quarter note trip. Just in your right foot against that. Three, four, one and uh, <laughs> and uh, one and uh, yeah. now just now just count the right foot playing one and uh, two, just right foot counting out loud. One, one and, and uh, uh, two, two and uh, one. Now turn that into one, two, three, four. And uh, one, one two, two, three. three. Don't slow down four, just change the counting, don't change the speed. Two. That used to be quarter note triplets. Four, That's your new quarter note. Now the left foot's going to play quarter note triplets against three, it. Four. One, one and two and. Uh, one, two, and uh, come on. All oh, right, there it is. There. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah. Got the idea. You. That's going to take some work. Yeah, that's definitely going to take some uh, shedding. A little time of this on yourself. But here's here's the here's the the, the last little bit of this, and that is. This is cool. Conceptually, it's brilliant, right? But what we want to do is we're using this exercise not just to explore this modern conception, but to get our feet to work. And so right. if I see this, if I see this, one and one, two, three. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Come you know on, how, see, uh, the, well, I mean, because I'm lifting with my, you may as well, you may as well, because I'm lifting with my hip. So here, even if it doesn't come off, I'm not. Look, you don't see my, uh, you don't, you don't see any change here, do you? It's kind of straight, isn't it? That's kind of what you're, you're playing like this. Yeah. Now watch what I want. This area moves more than anything else in the leg. Like that. You see, this has got to flex. It's got to be flexible. There you go. So I want you to be thinking, oh, and I'll remind you of that when, when I write out your lesson. But yeah. so you, you, you get the idea, right? It's, it's actually kind of starting to happen. And uh, we, we're, we're now coordinating. Now we're now coordinating. Now coordinating the uh, the hands and the feet. Yes. And I don't mean coordinating necessarily in terms of particular patterns, right? Uh, I'm talking, even though that's what we're doing here as well, but I'm talking about the coordination in terms of the muscular activity being involved. Yeah. So that you're not in the hands leading with your wrist beautifully and the leg it, it who that wants to play a note at the same time instead of the two behaving similarly okay, similarly 
Okay? We want them to behave and they can line up and they're moving similarly. You don't have the one, the hand making a proper throw and the, and the left and the right foot is doing this. <laughs> so you're throwing here and stomping here, <laughs> right? We, we want, remember Murray, Murray would say, this technique is all about being elegant. Yeah. So basically, more it's the more you fulcrum's kind of the, the ball of your foot almost too, right? There you go. You're coming up with your own conclusions now. Yeah. That, that are yeah. accurate. So roll up. You want to roll up. Roll up. Yes. Okay. You're gonna have fun with that. But yeah. but, but but now you, you are. A, I'm gonna turn off the camera here. But now you are. A, a considerably more holistic drummer. Right. 